between last night when I got here and this morning, I've been told to prepare myself for the fact that this is the last assembly and that there are indeed people, that the only reason they're here is simply to get credit and that they're pretty much under the assumption that I'm going to waste their time. And so can we just be honest, how many people are really in that category? Thank you for your honesty. I have to admit, when I was in school, I had that same experience a few times. Um, and so, so the rest of you really want to hear what I have to say? So here's, the, here's what I want to ask you. Because I can come and spout a whole bunch of stuff, right? I have talks up the wazoo that we could do. But I'm going to give you a choice. For me, and I was talking to David Koch and his lovely wife about this last night. You know, there's basically two kind of movies that I would go to. There's the feel-good movie. You know, it doesn't necessarily have a whole lot of content, or maybe it does. But when you leave, you end up just really feeling good. And then, there's those movies you go to that you don't necessarily end up leaving feeling good, but you end up leaving feeling changed. You end up leaving with a lot of things to kind of think about because you've been challenged. Either challenged just because of the content or challenged because it really tested some things that you really have strong beliefs or strong thoughts or feelings about. They're the kind of movies that sometimes make you mad because they've caused you to really look at your belief systems. But hopefully, if you don't get polarized about them, leave you forever changed. So I got two movies. Question is, which movie do you want to watch for about the next 40, 45 minutes? You want to be, cha you want to be challenged a little bit? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. You willing to perhaps be just a bit annoyed by me by the end of this? Or I guess I should ask that of me. Am I willing to have this whole group perhaps hate me by the end of this? Okay. So here you go. Um, there's a song by Tracy Chapman called Change. It's a great song. And there's a couple lines in it that remind me of, quite frankly, at a point in my life when I was in chiropractic school. And those two lines, um, one of them is, Ev if everything you think you know makes your life unbearable, would you change? And the other line is, is if you knew that you could find a truth, that created a pain that can't be soothed, would you change? And I tell you, when, when I was in chiropractic school, and some of you know, have heard me say this, I went to chiropractic school literally because I fell in love with the philosophy. I, I was pretty much through my undergrad. I was realizing that I didn't want to continue and get my PhD in oceanography, which was my first love. And I was looking at medical school, I was looking at vet school, and there was something that didn't feel right. My sister, who's a chiropractor, gave me a little pamphlet from Palmer College that had in it written a couple paragraphs on the philosophy of chiropractic. And I looked at her after I read it, and I said, why didn't you tell me? I thought chiropractic was just about back pain, quite frankly. You know, I go, I get crunched, I feel better, that was it. Nobody, because I was the little kid in the family, nobody ever really talked to me about it. It's just what we did. And I said, why didn't you tell me? And I was actually angry at her because I read that and for me there was such a truth in it. That the body has this amazing ability to heal itself. That there is some type of intelligence that organizes everything. And chiropractic's about releasing that potential and that possibility. And I said, this is something that I could devote my life to. 
And so I went to school, I went to chiropractic school. And then I went to chiropractic school. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, aside from, and I'm going to be straight up, and hopefully this isn't your experience, if this is why you went to chiropractic school, and no disrespect intended to my alma mater. But aside from a few little glimpses of people who I felt really got it and brought that idea of releasing the interference to that infinite possibility, other than that, there was a heck of a lot of back pain, headache, biomechanical, structural integrity. There was a heck of a lot of stuff that I was learning that I tell you what, I'm a big old science geek. I love. Mathematics. I love science. And so learning that stuff wasn't a problem for me, but I kept having to remind myself why I was even there. And the defining moment for me came when I was in clinic. And I tell you what, I had a beautiful clinic experience. I was the only woman going into a unit at the Palmer Clinic that had six women graduating all of their patients wanted a female extern. I had my clinic requirements done like that. Sweet! It was great. The thing is, though, is that right away, I saw a huge number of people. And I'm looking through this, and I'm looking through the history. Some of them have been coming to the, to the Palmer Clinic for 10, 20 years. And I'm treating people, I'm adjusting people, I'm serving people who have been coming in for back pain, headache, neck pain, whatever it is, some of them for 10, 20 years, coming in for the same old thing. And I'm looking at this, and I said, if I am, and if we as chiropractors, are releasing the interference to the infinite possibility within them, why aren't they changing? Very fine student externs. And why are all of them, literally all of them, their chief complaint has something to do with biomechanical structural integrity? Where's the disconnect? If everything you think you know makes your life unbearable. Well, I thought when I got when I signed up for chiropractic school, what I knew, what I knew to the core of my being is that through the art of chiropractic, I was going to help make the world a better place. Not by relieving suffering, because straight up, guys, guess whose mission that is? Medicine. To relieve suffering. That's not our gig. Our gig was releasing potential, expressing part of that infinite possibility. And so how is it that I got into that pigeonhole, and if everything that I had learned in school was only enough to get people out of pain, and I tell you what, the people who were being adjusted were totally happy with it. They're like, yep, as long as I get adjusted once a week, blah, 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 doesn't bother me. So they were happy. And I had to ask myself, is that enough? Is that enough for me to devote my life to? Because I tell you what, for me, if I'm not having fun, and if I'm not serving some bigger purpose that for me inspires some passion, quite frankly, it's not worth my time. It's not worth my life. And so here, I'd, I'd spent three and a half years devoting to myself to something. And then I had to ask, is this the right path for me? Straight up, it wasn't. And so I started to look around. I had applications, interviews set up to go into the Peace Corps because I thought, you know what? I got to have some skills and I can go make a difference. And then, because there is perfection in the universe, several things happened in my life. We won't take the time to go into them. 
to really make me look at this again and say, okay, is it truly that chiropractic has failed? Is it truly that, that we don't walk our talk? Is it truly that that big idea that we are about releasing the interference to that infinite possibility is simply just a bunch of rhetoric? Or is there truth in it? And it's just that we haven't quite matured enough to fully deliver that. And somewhere deep inside he said, you know what, I know it's true. Because you know what, I read the stories about the B.J. Palmer Clinic of people coming with all sorts of things and their lives having been changed. I've heard the stories from practices where people truly, with one adjustment, and their life changes, not just their symptomatology, but really, their life changes. It seems, you know, people tell you stories of, of the consciousness of the people they serve changing. And I'm like, okay, if it's happening out there, then it must be possible. So question is, I had to ask myself, am I willing to ask those tough questions? Am I willing to dedicate a bit of my life and my time and my energy to figure out what the difference is between one experience and another? The difference between being adjusted by somebody who's pretty technically correct and can move bones and has some decent success with back pain, headache, biomechanical, structural integrity. What's different between them and then those people who I consider masters? Who when they adjust you, there's something that happens that's so far beyond the bone movement and yet so hard to put words to those people that seem to adjust with such finesse, such ease, and truly, just by being in their hands, your life has changed. You melt. They say when Gonstead adjusted, it was like lightning striking from the inside out. They say that when he adjusted, you barely saw that movement, and that there was a force in that slight movement that was generated through him that was life-changing, not because he hit him hard and knocked him out of a chair, but because it was delivered with such artistry and such finesse. When BJ adjusted, they say there was a light and a, an energy that moved through the entirety of the person's being. And magic happened. What's the difference? And so, essentially, and I've been in practice for 20 years now, I know it's hard to imagine because I am so youthful. <laughs> and funny, y'all keep getting older, and yet I stay the same. <laughs> My 20 years has been about, okay, I want to truly be able to deliver the promise of chiropractic. That, for me, is worth devoting my life to. It. 